Hi, my name is Shay Gibson. I'm a meteorologist with Weatherflow. I live in the Charleston area. I'm also a kite boarder. And we're going to be talking about the different ride spots in the Charleston area, the skill levels needed, the wind directions, and some of the safety aspects for a lot of these spots. Our Barrier Island beaches provide a variety of local ride spots. In addition, there are other ride spots in and around the Charleston Harbor. Our coastline has a very dynamic atmosphere that brings in sea breezes along the land and sea interface. Our predominant winds are side-on southwesterly sea breezes which provide many riding opportunities throughout the year. The other sea breezes we have consist of east-northeast winds which are really known to crank up at times and then the lighter easterlies and southeasterlies. Okay, so now I'm going to give you an intro to the local ride spots and we're going to start with the south end of Folly Beach. The skill level for riding South Folly ranges anywhere from beginner to advanced. The side-on winds are more for beginners whereas the side-side to side-off are for the more advanced riders. It is possible to kite around the tip of the island on the back side, however there are strong currents and there are oyster beds along the shoreline. The wide open stretch of Folly Beach from south to north consists of multiple surf spots and a wide swim zone near the Folly Beach Pier. Also be aware of rock ruins that appear frequently along the beach that extend out very far into the ocean. We use the 100 yard rule to steer clear of the swimmers and the surfers as well as outside of these rock ruins. North Folly is another rounded island tip that offers a variety of wind directions for riding. Also be aware there are multiple rock rollings there and strong currents. This area is for intermediate to advanced riders because of this. On the plus side, you do have great views of the Morris Island Lighthouse and at low tide, really good flats in between the exposed sandbars. To get there, you park at the cul-de-sac and you can either take the first access path out to the beach to ride side shore to onshore winds and cleaner swell, or you can take the half mile walk down the Coast Guard access road to ride the north tip of the beach which provides other directions such as north, northeast, and east, northeast. Sunrise Park at James Island requires an advanced level of skill due to the small area of the launch zone and the necessity to get back to that launch zone in order to leave the water. Rideable wind directions for launching here are generally from the northwest, the north, and the north-northeast. The harbor is for deep water kiting. It's about 50 feet deep in the shipping channel, so there's usually a good bit of chop out there. This spot is used more by foilers than the conventional kiters. Moving north across the harbor and past Fort Sumter, it's Fort Moultrie located on Sullivan's Island between Station 12 and Station 14. They're called Station because of the old trolley that used to run across the island many years ago. This spot requires advanced skill level of riding because of the submerged rocks and the strong deep water current along the side of the shipping channel. This spot is usually ridden during strong westerly winds or in the cooler months along southwesterly winds during marine layer events. The beach here disappears at high tide, so be sure to time your session correctly. It's also best and safer to go during an incoming tide in case you have a gear malfunction. Note that this beach is one of two spots to launch from on Sullivan's Island, the other one being at station 28.5 according to the town ordinance. The stretch of beach from south to north along Sullivan's Island features the Sullivan's Island Lighthouse as well as an outer sandbar that extends the remaining length of the island, which becomes exposed at low tide. The skill level on Sullivan's Island ranges from beginner to advanced. Heed the 100 yard rule and also stay away from the swimmers and beachgoers. They always have the right of way. Near the north end of Sullivan's Island is station 28.5, which is the kite capital of Charleston. This spot is well known for its outer sandbar, which creates flat water on the inside with waves on the outside. Station 28.5 is good in all directions from east northeast, clockwise over to west southwest. All skill levels can ride and learn here. Be careful to stay away from the inner spit at Breach Inlet. It has strong currents and can pull you through on an incoming tide. The Isle of Palms is a wide open stretch of beach with one swim zone at the Isle of Palms Pier. All skill levels are able to ride, but we do use the 100 yard rule and we steer clear of swimmers, beachgoers, and the surfers. Kiteable wind directions on the Isle of Palms are from east northeast and clockwise over to southwest. The company that I work for, Weatherflow, has key weather stations in the Charleston area that provide near real-time wind observations for the local kiters to monitor. Some examples of these stations include the Isle of Palms Pier, Folly Beach Pier, and the Front Range Light at Fort Sumter. Find further information about the local kiteboarding scene in the Chucktown Wind Report Facebook group. Have fun kiteboarding in Charleston and be safe.